Back in my consulting days, I witnessed the aftermath of many cyber attacks. Companies who thought they were untouchable got blindsided by digital disasters they never even saw coming. Their infrastructures were shattered like a city after an earthquake, and it cost them years in profits or productivity as I helped them to rebuild. Now, all of this happened because they neglected the very advice I'm going to share with you. So lean in, cloud defenders, as I distill 15 years of hard-earned cloud security wisdom into a lightning-fast 15 minutes. To fortify your cloud, we need five critical defenses. Secure, lock, protect, identify, and defend. And it all starts with your identities. They're the gateway into your kingdom. And to defend them, we need to use the sword of multi-factor authentication and the shield of conditional access. Now, these templates are the most common scenarios to protect your identities and are a great place to start. Click over here on Remote Work and then select Require MFA for All Users. Then click Create at the bottom. Give it a name and in the Policy section here, set it to Report Only. This way you can see what the policy does first without blocking anybody. Then click Create. So here's your new policy, and this is pretty great, but I found that you need a little something extra if you're going to get the protection you really need. Go to the Users section, and then click on the Exclude tab. Now, since you created this with a template, your user account will be listed here. And that's good so that you don't lock yourself out by mistake. But this policy is to require all users to use MFA, which should include yourself. So to use this shield correctly, remove your user account. But you really do need something here, and that's gonna be a different kind of account. It's more than likely that your current user is a sync user, or it has some other kind of protections applied to it. What we really need here is a backdoor or break glass account. Now those accounts should be cloud only, and they should never have any other kind of protections associated with them, like MFA, PIM, or conditional access policies. That's because if something goes wrong with all that advanced security stuff, you need a way to get back in and fix everything. So click Save here. Now we need one for our application, which in my case is going to be Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365. So give it a name and select just the users who are going to access those apps. And we're not going to need any exclude users here either. For your target resource, you want to select your cloud apps that you need. Then in the network section, set that for any network with no exclusions. In the access control, check require MFA. And then down in the session section, you want to enable sign-in frequency. And I like to set that for once a day. With all your policies created, let's run a test. Back in the main policy section, click what if at the top. Enter your username. And then you want to put in your public IP address along with whatever country you're in. Scroll down and click what if. Then you'll find at the bottom all the policies that will and won't apply to that particular sign-in. Now give it a few days and check your sign-in logs and make sure everything looks as you expect. If not, just go back and tweak your policies. And then you can turn on the sword and shield and keep everybody safe. Now I've got a deeper dive on CA policy along with every other topic I'm going to cover. And that's all linked in the video description below. And you can check them out after this video. Now let me show you how to close the gate of your cloud fortress. And if you thought that single sign-on was just a convenience feature, you're wrong. It secures your environment against intruders using something called Home Realm Discovery. This is how Entra ID looks up your sign-in name, discovers which Entra tenant your user is associated with, and then it looks at how Entra is configured to accept those logins. And you can set up SSO in really two ways. The seamless full SSO experience where users almost never have to sign in or the anti SSO experience. Now, how you set this up exactly will depend on your VM's join method. If you're using a traditional Active Directory, then you're going to need to set up ADFS and a certificate authority first. But if you're doing Entra Cloud Join only, then you just need to go over to your AVD host pool, go to RDP properties, and then you want to select here for the connections to use SSO. For your hybrid joined VMs, you're gonna to need to do this same step and you're gonna to need to set up Entra ID Kerberos. And that just needs a simple PowerShell script like this. Over on the Win365 side, you wanna open your existing provisioning policies. Go to the general section and edit, 
scroll to the bottom and check this box for Entra SSO. Now, before you click this, understand that this change will not be applied to your existing cloud PCs. To do that, you're gonna to need to reprovision. And you should also know that when you reprovision, that's gonna wipe out any current restore points you have. So if you're okay with that, click Create. Then you wanna to go to your Windows devices and click the bulk actions at the top, select Windows for the OS, and then for the device actions, set that for reprovision. Click Next. And then you wanna click here and select your particular devices, click on the VMs or find them with all the filters. Once you've got everything, go ahead and finish that. All right, so that's how you do the full SSO experience. What about anti-SSO? Well, we can actually do that right back in our AVD conditional access policy. Just go to your session controls over on the left, change your sign-in frequency to every time. So with the front gate secure, we need to talk about protecting your treasure. Your data is the gold that the bad guys are trying to steal. So you need to encrypt, mask, and guard your data like it's the precious gems of the kingdom. And we do this in three different parts. Your network cards connect your VMs to your virtual networks. So we need a way to guide the traffic you want to the VMs and blow up everything else. So it sounds like you need to set up a minefield of network security groups or a firewall that has a lot of intelligence but also some extra cost. Now, no matter which one of those you choose to use, your workload for your cloud PCs will still need the same rules to allow their connections. And those are found here in the docs. Now, notice how almost every rule here uses a tag. And that's to help you when writing your rules in your firewall policies like this, or in your network security groups like that. Now, along with that firewall, you can also use a seam solution like Azure Sentinel. Now, Sentinel stands as a vigilant guard on the walls of your castle, harnessing the power of advanced analytics and global cybersecurity intelligence to not only detect and respond to threats, but also to predict and prevent them before they can impact your network. So you set up all of your data sources first in the Connect Hub, and that'll also come with all the workbooks and pre-written queries that you're gonna need, along with a GUI here for doing investigations where you can see all of the interactions and relationships. Now, you're not just monitoring, you're fortifying your network's integrity with the strength of cloud intelligence. And with your network defenses online, you can look at the inner stronghold of your digital kingdom, your VMs. And in your arsenal is the mighty Generation 2 virtual machine. Forged in the heart of a dying star, its power has no equal. These VMs are equipped with virtual TPM chips, which not only makes them compatible with Windows 11, but also grants you the two champions of trusted launch and confidential VMs. Only these can repel those most subtle of attacks, bootkits and rootkits. And those try to hide underneath your operating system, striking at you from the shadows. And only confidential VMs are powerful enough to process the most classified of data shielding it from any prying eyes in a sanctuary so secure, not even Azure can look inside. And now it's time to reveal the silent guardian of the realm, its shield of encryption, harnessing the power of Azure to guard your disks. And for your Windows VMs, that's gonna use BitLocker, and that's bound together with an Azure Key Vault. And this Azure disk encryption locks the disks so that they can only be accessed within Azure and only by the VM that holds the keys. So first, we'll need a key vault. And in the settings blade, go to access configuration and you wanna check the box to use Azure disk encryption. With that set up, go to your virtual machine and then over on the left, go to disks. And then at the top here, you wanna to go to the advanced settings. At the bottom, you can select what kind of disk you wanna encrypt then select your key vault and pick your version. And if you don't have a key, you can just click right over here and create one, which just needs a name and you wanna use RSA 4096. And you can even select over here to roll over your keys for even more security. Now that's good to just set up a single VM, but to do this at scale, you wanna run some simple PowerShell like this one, and that just takes a few seconds. Now the next phase of security is to identify the needs of your workload. And that starts by putting a moat around your castle, keeping your traffic on the Azure network and never exposing it to the public internet. Go to your AVD host pools, and on the left, you wanna to go to the network section. Private endpoints allow you to connect to Azure's platform services, like the AVD cloud service, 
directly from your private virtual network, not over the internet. And this is done by creating a network card that sits on your VNet and you'll send your traffic to that NIC and that gets routed on the back end directly to the AVD service. And you can configure this in multiple ways, but I'll just show you how to set up the session host for now. You do that with this middle option. Then you go to the private endpoints tab and you wanna add a new endpoint. You wanna build this where your host pool is located and that's the resource group and the region. Give it a name, click next. And the only resource we can use here is connection. So select that, click next. Then you wanna pick the virtual network where your AVD hosts live. And you wanna leave the allocation here to dynamic, which will just make managing this whole thing easier. And on the next screen, you wanna set up your private DNS zone and that'll be associated with your virtual network, which will help everybody find the service, add all of your standard tags and create. Now there is one other area that we can use private endpoints as well, and that's in the vault inside our castle. Your Azure file shares hold your FSLogix user profiles, each one a treasure trove of user data and treasures must be guarded. So go to your storage account, check out the networking blade, and you want to set the storage account firewall here to disable public access. Click save and then go to the private endpoints tab, create a new one just like we did before, select the same network where your hosts live, and then set up a new DNS zone, add your tags, and you're done. Now for all of your private endpoints, you can always go back to your NSGs and your firewalls and update them so that the rules will block public access as an added gem of security. So with the connections to the AVD service all set up and your profiles all locked down, now we need some user protection. And we have four guardians here that should help us. First, while we're here in the Azure portal, go back to your host pool and to your RDB properties. Go to the device redirections tab, and then you wanna select your clipboard redirection to allow. Now we can configure these four different guardians using GPOs or Intune policy. Unidirectional clipboard is actually still in preview, so it'll need its own policy for now. And that's gonna be using Windows 10 and admin templates. Select custom and create, give it a name and a description, and then you wanna add a new configuration. So now we got these boxes and what in the world do we put in there? Well, the answer is over in the docs. You wanna find the different section here for how you want the clipboard to work. Then you wanna copy the OMA URI paste it back in the portal, and then you wanna find the string value that you want to allow, copy that, paste, and it should look something like this. Click next, the accessibility rules here should be blank, and then create the policy. For the three other guardians, we wanna create a new policy for that using Windows 10 and the session catalog. Search for Azure Virtual Desktop, and then you wanna check the boxes here for screen capture protection and watermarking, then do a search for time limits. You wanna select the idle user, disconnect and active sessions. Now we can close this fly out and then we wanna open the admin templates dropdown and enable everything. Now you can set the time limits in a way that you think best minimizes your user risk. And this is how I like mine. You can scroll to the bottom and if you want, you can change the watermark settings here, but I like the defaults. Then complete the policy assignment just like before and you're done. Which brings us to the last section where we need to defend against the unexpected. On the Windows 365 side, we've got two heroes here, data loss prevention and customer lockbox. These services will protect your data, even from Microsoft. Now, everything that supports wants to do has to be approved by their management team first and then by you before support can even come near your data then every action that they take is going to be tracked and audited, which you can review at any time. To set this up, come here to the admin center. On the left, you wanna to go to settings and then to org settings. Find customer lockbox, click on it and enable. Now this goes right along with data loss prevention. That's part of Microsoft purview. And you can set up just one kind of policy here that protects your sensitive data no matter what kind of device or sign-in your users are doing. And we also got two wise counselors standing by to advise you on all the best cloud practices. In Azure, you'll find that as the Azure Advisor and Defender for Cloud. 
And this wisdom has been gathered over 15 years of cloud experience to guide you through hardening every process and secure your cloud fortress right now. But believe it or not, that's not everything. You can keep securing your cloud right over here. And happy learning.